how can you go from playing a game that you play because of a joke because someone give you the challenge to try to beat Jump King this was a joke someone on the Facebook group told me why don't you try to complete Jump King it was a joke and now one year after it had been my favorite game of all time. It sounds weird for many people. <clears throat> and I wasn't sure if I wanted to make a video about this topic, but I think it's an important thing to talk about why this joke kind of a game that so many people hate can ending up being my favorite game throwing Cineblade 3 from the throne that was my favorite game before how can this indie game with a man jumping around top that top every Zelda game for me I'm a huge Zelda fan top every Mario game top every Metroid game people don't understand it and I, I understand it actually I do understand it why it can sound confusing why maybe someone may think you just got captured by the the magic while you were live streaming but there are so many reasons to why i love jump king so much so i decided to take you on a journey my journey with the game take you back one year ago up till now what had happened what have changed because this game wasn't my number favorite game of all time if you ask me from a month ago it wasn't on my 25 best game of all time if you ask me almost a year ago after some let's play of the game it wasn't a game that was near my top 25 games of all time so what happened well it's a long journey and it has been a long journey for me and the journey hasn't completed yet there's still more to come and I can see that and I can hear that not all people really understand what it is with that game I've tried to talk with some people why it's magical and some have listened and some is trying to escape my voice and and I lost subscribers while I have played through this game I've done a let's play for for the last one week and so and I have lost over 10 subscribers while I was live streaming this game because people people don't care people will hear me talk about Zelda Tears of the Kingdom people will hear me talk about Mario games Zelda games Zelda theories we subscribe it to your channel because of your Zelda reaction video so why are you talking about an indie game? Why are we talking about this? Why are you wearing a crown? Why do you live stream the game all the time? We have so many questions, Daniel. But probably you won't see this video, so it's okay. I understand. I understand why indie game doesn't connect with everyone. And I understand why a game with, with, with a king jumping around is weird. We, we can't take you seriously, Daniel. I have decided not to make a script while I was doing this video it was the plan to begin with but I think it's better just to talk just to talk freely talk about my journey with the game talk about my travel from last year to now what had happened what have changed what kind of magic had happened to me is it just the gameplay or is it more is it something with the with with your personality that have changed is it something with the community is it something with the music is it something with the background is it something with the gameplay is it something with with that you have live streamed it is 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 it something with the challenge you have taken yeah all those things let me take you back to last year where a man called Muhammad 
was trolling some kind of way on the Facebook group. I'm that kind of guy that loves to check up a challenge. I have the P-Wing channel, of course, and sometimes uh, before, for a year ago and, and longer back, I uh, live streamed when it was night. I did a midnight let's play here in Denmark when everyone was sleeping and I was just playing for myself and I was playing until the next morning and I didn't want to stop before it was completed. I had that challenge for a bit and uh, some people really like it and and some people was like, okay, you, you really like to take a challenge because the challenge was I had to complete it before it was morning, before I really, it was important that I completed the game before I stopped. And um, some people really liked that challenge and after that I tried to take on some difficult game like Super Goose and Ghost where I was taking the challenge that I have to complete the game both time so I could buy a, a game. So people was like, oh, they was cheering on me at, at the chat. And uh, one of my good friends, Mark, who had a podcast, he told me, Daniel, why don't you try to play uh, Ghost and Ghouls and Ghosts Resurrection, the, the new game that comes for the Switch. And every time I take, took up the challenge and we, I played through the legendary mode, uh, I didn't end up completed it actually, but it was a blast. And the only reason I stopped was because I didn't have the time. I took a week, week out just to play that game and I didn't end up completed it in that week. But uh, I, I was close, I was one of the last levels. So it was pretty exciting and I really want to take up the challenge again in the future. But then there was a man called Muhammad that said, Hey Deng, have you heard about Jump King? And I hadn't heard about the game. I was like, uh, what 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 kind of game is it? Yeah, it's, he told me it's a very frustrating game, and many people will react on that why every time they fail. And I was like, oh, I have a, a high temper, so that sounds like a <laughs> a very dangerous challenge. And uh, I was like, okay, I, I will look into that. And a week after, my good friend Mark, he. As I told you, he had a podcast, a Danish podcast, and he was talking about the game at the same time. I don't know if the game was released at that time because it had been released on Steam for some years ago, I think. I don't know if it was a new game for the Nintendo Switch at that time. But they were talking about the game in the podcast, and uh, in the podcast there are three people, two guys and one girl. And the two guys was talking about how difficult the game was and how frustrating it was and how fun it was to live stream the game. And uh, uh, Anne, one of the, gir uh, the girl in the podcast, one of my good friends too, she was like, and don't, she can't remember it, but I'm pretty sure she said, <laughs> so maybe I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure she said, Jump King have a horrible level design or something is not a good game why do you love to talk about it? why do you want to play it and sorry if i remember incorrect but i think she told i'm pretty sure she said that and uh, i was like okay she don't like it so it's a it's a, a game that's only some people like because of the challenge because of the quirkiness because it's weird it's a it's a king jumping around it, it calls jump king and there is a title on the jump king there is a smoking hot babe at the top. That's the title of the game. <laughs> and I was like, oh my. And you would get it digitally for around 100 Danish crowns. So around, I don't know, uh, $15, I think is around that. And um, But you know me, I love my physical games. So I ended up looking for it on, uh, on eBay and you could get there only a physical copy from Japan. And uh, it had English voice acting, no, not voice acting, it had English text in the game. So I picked up the physical version. You can see it's still sealed because I'm weird. So I bought it digitally too. So <laughs> I said to people, I'll take up the challenge. I will try to get to the top of the tower, the main game, to pick up the smoking hot babe. And let's see if I can complete it. And the people said that, okay, there are, there are the main game and there are some DLC. And I was like, okay, we focus on the main game. Let's see what this game is. And it was just a little kind of joke thing. And um, <laughs> I have a clip from the first time I tried Jump King for a year ago. And uh, it's clearly that <laughs> the game really made me, made me angry. Oh! 
Because the gameplay with the game is that you are at the bottom and you have to climb up to the top. So you have you have one screen where there are some platforms you have to jump across and um, you have to climb the tower and get to the top where the smoking hot babe is. The difficult part with this game is that every time you miss often you will fall down to the ground or you will lose a lot of progress. Because the platforms can be very tricky and difficult to land on. So. There are a lot of obstacles on the way, and and uh, you 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 get a challenge with the platforms, of course, and you have the weather that can have some troubles for your way to platforming through through the level. As an example, you have the wind that blows you, so you all the time is moving a little bit to the left or to the right, um, depends on where the wind is blowing. So there are different obstacles. On the way to the top and this sounds like a very arcadey game where okay the object is simple get to the top then done how difficult can it be and if you look on the gameplay from jump king you will uh, I, i'm probably I, i'm pretty sure that a lot of you will think well that doesn't look that difficult you the only difficult the, the, the only challenge is that you have to jump and be precisely on your jumps but yeah I thought that too. Jump King is a game you have to try before you can talk about it. You have to feel the mechanics, you have to feel the control, and it's not that the control is bad, absolutely not. It's actually incredible. But it's not played like a Mario game, where you have full control over the jump. In Jump King, you can walk around as a normal guy, but when you have to jump, you have to push the A button down, and if you want to jump far, you have to put, hold it down for a longer time. And if you want to do a small jump, you have just to tip it a little bit. So you, you don't have a totally full control over the jump, besides the feeling you have with the controller. You have to feel the jump. You have to be in control with yourself. And it looks easy at the beginning because the platforms are huge. And there are some obstacles on the way, but when you come up to the top, the platforms get tiny, and there come some ice on the floor that gets that makes it slippery and things like that. And every time you miss, you you can ending up fall four to ten screens down because the the level design is made that it have to make you angry. There are some there are some traps on the way, so if you fall on a specific jump, it will take you all the way down to the bottom. And the, the level is designed to do that. So it wants you to get frustrated. They want you to feel like it's impossible to get up to the babe. And it's a very important task. And it's a very, very important feeling that the game gives you that. Because you have to have the feeling that, wow, this is almost impossible. Can I really do it? And every time you try, every time you do it, you get a little bit better. At the beginning, it's, it seems like an impossible mission. And as you saw at the clip, I got so frustrated. My anger, my temper, I was bashing the, the, the box and yelling all the time. I made a let's play back then. And I think it took me around five Let's Play to come to the top. And uh, when I got to the top, it was like a, it was like a, I had run a marathon. 
I had, I had, I had, I had completed something that I didn't actually think would happen. It was not just to get from the bottom to the top, and it was not just to complete the game. The magic happened. Every time you fail, and you have to try again. The journey where you could feel you could get better every time you played the game. You have to be patient while you're playing Jump King. It's not a game where you just sit down and do something else. You have to focus, you have to be concentrated and accept the journey. But the journey up to the top and why it was so magical is much more than just getting to the top. For me, it was live streaming and talking with the chat. And you fail a lot. And every time you fail, you are chit chatting with the chat and they're like, holy shit, it's difficult. And they were cheering on you. And it was like you were on a journey with the chat, with the people that was talking. And I think there's happened something magical when you live stream Jump King. And that's the reason so many people have live streamed the game. Because it's a task, it's a task, it's a difficult one. And people like to see suf people suffering. <laughs> it's funny. And is it actually possible to complete the game? So how is the first tower? Because I told you there was there is three towers. There are the main game, there are tower one, and then we have the two DLCs that have one tower each. In tower one, you start in a forest area. And that area is just magical. And you see that area a lot of time. The, the main goal for me at that time, the first time I played it, was just to get to the top. You have the forest where you have a tent, you see some water floating, and, and the, the details in the graphic is so beautiful, pixel -added. It's like made in a in a very retro kind of style, but still have the magical touch where you sometimes have to use your imagination to understand what is they are trying to show you. And But it's not that. It's ugly looking. It's beautiful looking. It's very colorful. And at the start area, you have the... the there isn't a music, but you can hear the forest. You can hear the, the birds in the trees whispering. You can hear some grasshopper, no, no, what it is called. You can hear other animals whispering in the trees. And uh, every time I, I started at the, level, the the first area, it sounds like the area in Rayman. It's, it's like in the Rayman, Rayman forest. And then you climb up, you come into a, to the False King's Keep where the, it's raining, it's very atmosphere, atmospheric, 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 I don't know. It's very, you can feel the magic, you can feel the, the, the tone the, the developer tried to make, they want you to feel already, they're trying to make you feel something. It's raining outside, there is a bird uh, calling at you who had a, a little coin, so you can do a side crest kind of thing. And uh, you're jumping around with the platforms. There are some fire and uh, some food cooking. And you climb that area. And it's a very difficult area. After that, you come to Bakenburg, where is a city in the sky. The city is falling apart almost. There is a little shopkeeper. There are some jumps where you have to jump through a roof to get to the platform. After that, you come up to a, a area where it like where there are flagpoles, where you have to touch a little flagpole that's the, the, the platform you have to jump over to. So the platforms get very small and tiny and and the, the music disappear again at that time. After that, that's a very difficult area. You come up to a snow area where the wind is blowing. It's blowing from the right side to the left side and you have to be careful. There's a snow on the ground so you can walk around. So you have to do a jump every time you are going to walk around because the snow is so deep that you just can't walk. And you f have a big fear in you that you will that you will that you will fail that you will fall all the down down to Beckenberg again and climb up to the flagpoles again that's a very difficult area so you try to manage to complete the snow area where there's a wind there's the snow and you are climbed a lot maybe you have used around 5 hours at that time just to 
learn the level design to know it's not just that you have to jump around you have to know where you have to stand how long you have to jump what kind of platform you have to get to so for me i started a feeling kind of like a it's not just a platformer and i know some people may think i'm weird now but there are some puzzle mechanics in the game because you have to remember where to stand you have to use the wall to bounce into it to bounce back so you can play around with the level design when you look at the level design it looks like a very simple kind of design but the people behind the game have thinking everything out they have thinking you could do a shortcut if you do it if you take that route you can you can you can bounce into the wall and bounce back you could do a full jump if you stand on the left side of the platform and just jump with a full jump over to the next platform every jump feels like it had been made with such a love and care it's not just meshing together it's not just like a mario maker kind of feeling the game have you can feel that the level design is made with thoughts love and with with uh, a feeling that you have to get a challenge out of the gameplay so you're struggling through that area in a long time the forest the the false king's keep the beckenberg area the flo- flagpole the flagpole area and of course this shitting uh, toilet area where it looks like there's shit falling down off the wall that's the second area by the way and then you are trying to climb through the snow area and you have been losing so many times and then you oh, oh shit i get goosebumps because i know what i'm going to say now then you come to the church <laughs> when i hit that area for, oh i get goosebumps when i hit that area for the first time and when i seen some of my friends playing afterwards that area is your safe zone the church the demons can get you at the church jesus is watching over you God is protecting you. You can fall down. You have a safe zone. And that's a very important area. You can fall down. It's a safe area. So now you're almost at the top. And the developer, they know you have struggled a lot. And this is the main game. You have to be a little bit... Take your hand in some way. It doesn't take your hand, but you have to be careful. But when you come to the church, you see lights candles everywhere you see at the background you see the mirrors the the mirrors there are in the church with the different colors uh, and it's so beautiful and the music is oh, people is mumming in the background and it's just a magical area you can relax here you can take a breath you can lay back relax take a breath you, have, you already have done a great job right now. It's incredible that you have come so far. You're close. You have done well, really. And I remember when I come to that area the first time, it was like, damn, damn, man. You're trying to climb the, the church and come to the top where you see the, the calls, the cross, the Jesus calls. I'm not sure how to pronounce it in English, actually. I think it's just calls. Where Jesus hang. And um, you jump to the left, uh, you, sorry, jump to the right and up to the top of the church. And then you come up to blue sky. I don't know why it gets so epic at the end. 
You come from the church to the blue sky, which is some incredible music again, totally melancholic. You have this, this, the blinking stars in the background. And I didn't notice that the first time, because the challenge here is so difficult. You are standing on a ice ice ground so your the ground is slippery so you have to be careful not to fall all the way down to the bottom of the church so the first time i played this area i didn't notice the stars in the background i didn't actually connect totally with the music the first time so i didn't notice it and i think that's an important thing i will talk about later i definitely struggle with the ice area it's extremely difficult and i think in my opinion, you have the most difficult jump in the first main area game. After you come through the ice area, you come to the tower itself where the baby is at the top and the music <laughs> gets so fucking epic. I have used the music in my uh, playlist music or epic music, the chills music. The tower is shaking and you know you are so close. If you fall down, you will fall down all the way to the church of almost. Maybe you are lucky that you will hit an ice area, maybe. And you will get all the way up to the church and the music is epic and... <laughs> and then you come to the top finally with the final last crazy jump and you save the babe. And you get the nice, jazzy, sexy music and you run away with the babe. And I was, I was blown away over when I played the main game. And the game save up how many falls you have made and how many times you have jumped. And I was think I was around over a thousand fails, over a thousand falls. And I've played around eight hours, I think. I can't remember, but it was very, 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 very high. And through the, the playthrough, I was just talking with the chat, but it wasn't at that moment the chat was getting under my skin yet. I was like, holy shit, this game surprised me so much and people was trolling a little bit in the chat. Well, now you can play Tau 2, the DLC one. I was like, okay, we can check it out. And that was the beginning when I started on Tau 2, where I was totally in love with Jump King. At that moment, the first time I tried Tau 2, I was blown away over the surroundings in that area. It's like when you played Mario Galaxy 1, yeah, that's a great game, that's an awesome game, one of the best Mario games ever made. And then Galaxy 2 come and say, I'm the same, but I do everything better. That's like, that's the same way with Tower 2 in Jump King. It takes all the great things from Tower 1 and just make it even better. How is that possible? How can the level design be even better? How can the music be even better? How can the background get even more epic? And combining that, the chat really set me on fire with Tower 2. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I took a little break because it was time for me to make my list over my 25 best games of all time. I made that on the Nintendo Talk channel that's called the P-Wing now. Before that, it was a Danish channel, and I started to make it in episode where I talked about my favorite games of all time. And it surprised many people that Jump King was on the list when I come to the second area. I was like, yeah, I know this is a joke game. I know many people just wanted me to try the game for fun. And I'm addicted to it. I'm addicted to the game now. <laughs> and I think I put it around place. I can't remember, but you can go back and look. I think I put it around place number 21 or something like that at the beginning. <laughs> and people was laughing because I was putting Jump King over my best games of all time. And, but it was because of the challenge. It was because it took me surprise, silly, so much. And it was a journey that I had. And it's not often I get to a feeling where I can just feel the journey so much. But I started with Tower 2. You have a snow area at the beginning. You have an ice cave where there are some creepy people in the cage where they're mocking you every time you fall. You come up to a city that has been under a tragedy, like a, a plague has touched it. It is like a, a city in illness. Every people is gone. 
and the music in that area is just incredible. You have the wind again that's trying to blow you off. And I don't know what happened when I come to that area. There was some, that, that happened something magical at that area with the chat. You were starting to talk back and forth and, and I remember Kim was joining at that moment. Kim, one of my good friends and one of the guys who's a part of the P-Wing now the, on the podcast too, he uh, joined the, the chat at that moment. I remember he wasn't a part of the first area, but he was joining that and uh, he was like, wow, this is chilling. I didn't know it was so chill and we was just talking back and forth with chat and we are around 14 people every time I live stream, do a live stream. And uh, we were talking about personal things. I was talking about my depression. I was talking about the split between my my partner before with the Nintendo talk and why we stopped. We talked about my my anxiety and we talked about food. We talked about games and love and things like that. Everything. We had hit some dark areas, we hit some light areas and we just talk. And I remember every time I'm thinking about jumping, I'm thinking about the talks we had. It was like we were sitting in a on a couch with some of my 14 friends that many of them I hadn't seen back then. We haven't seen each other in real life then. I have seen them now. But back then, many of them I hadn't seen. We were just sitting and talking and, and I, I had a feeling that we were sitting on a couch just chilling. It was something special. And in the meantime, we were trying to manage to complete the area with the abandoned town. And it was difficult. We tried, the chat tried to help me out to find the best road, the best way to climb the area. And it was like we was doing it together. And every time I started the live stream after that, I didn't say, can I do it tonight? But I was saying, can we do it tonight? Because the chat, chat was helping me. They were cheering on me. After the city that had been on the a tragedy. There is a little light moment where you come up to uh, almost like a grease area, kind of grease area. It's very right and, uh, and the platform is like made out of stone in some way and it looks very clean. And the music hits and it's very chilling, it's very calm. It's calm down. You see a little guy that's trying to stutter in some of the statues. And the area is extremely hard. There are so tiny platforms, but the combination of the music and the chilling vibes is just wow. After that, you come up to a, a area with a snake. There's a big snake that's, tr that's saying you can do a side mission. You come up for through, come up to a water area where, where you're underwater, where you have to learn a totally new mechanic. You, you are jumping slower, you're walking slower now, so you have to relearn the whole mechanic and remember you can still fall all the way down. You come up to the magic tower, I called it that, where there are some invisible walls and it's just crazy. Tower 2, I get goosebumps again, I get chills again on my body. Tower 2 is has such a memorable areas. And at that moment when I hit the top on the babe, when I got to the babe, I was starting to listen to the music at my work because in Tower 2 there are some, in Tower 1 it's more like a atmospheric music, kind of you heard bird songs and a little chippering, but in Tower 2 there are tunes, magical tunes, that I heard around while I was working and it made me relax and remember, I told you that I have a big temper and at Tower 2 I started to feeling a change in my body. Every time I fall back before, I was yelling, I was angry. But at Tower 2, it was something like that I, when I missed a jump, sometimes I smiled. What happened? I was already, I, I, I was screaming all the time. But now I'm smiling. I had a good time. And I told the chat at the end of Tower 2, it's weird. But it's like that Jump King had learned me to control my temper. And I was a very angry man sometimes at people with if they did something weird. 
if someone was driving too fast or in front of me in on while I was driving on the street, I could pull the finger and yell at them. If some some people was treating me bad, I could get angry and yell at them. And that was a problem for me. I couldn't control it. I have always had a battle with my temper. And it's like after a plate jumping out, I'm not kidding you. It's like I have been calmed down, calm down. I don't get angry at the same level. And some may think maybe it's just because you are getting older, you have got a kid now, but this was before I got a kid. But yeah, maybe it's just the age I have been grown up. But no, I have a great feeling that's the game that has made a difference. I have learned to control my temper, to take a breath, <laughs> to relax. And I told the chat that I think I have a better temper now, thanks to Jump King. And since then, uh, every time I get angry, uh, I'm more, I'm just moving away from the bad wives that I get, thinking of something good instead. At the same time, at that moment, I was trying to convince people they really want, have to try Jump King because it's magical and many people always say this is a bad game and they said quote over bad game because okay maybe it's good but people it's still a bad game and I was like no it's not it's a masterpiece it's totally masterpiece so I continue with my my top 25 list there come a chapter 2 in that list and I was like in the video I make back then that was, that's in Danish sadly um, I said while I was making the video yeah I know that last time I put Jump King on number 21 or something like that, but I have to say it had <laughs> it had moved up. I know I'm I'm playing the game right now, so it's difficult to sit where where I have to put the game. So I put it on number 16 or something like that, and people was laughing. Wow, Jump King ending up being one of the best game of all time. Next time he will have it on top 10 or something like that, and I was like, no, 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 <laughs> Undertale and Xenoblade and Zelda games are still better. And Jump King had just a magical touch and moment with me. It was because of the chat. It was because of the challenge. It was because of the the journey I had, the 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 the, the change in my temper and things like that. <laughs> and then we started up playing the last DLC, Tower 3. And uh, for many reasons, that's, uh, for many says that's almost an impossible, depressing tower. You start in a huge forest where you have to collect some mushrooms, that's a nice area, and then you get down to the bog. A very dark, depressing, melancholic area where the music is so depressing that when you have to master that area, you're walking down in a sump, so you have to, it's like you're moving around in snow. At the same time, you're in the water. There's a very dark area. You have difficult time to see what you're doing. And the music is so depressing. It's so fucking depressing that I have difficult time to be at the area because I uh, have anxiety and I feel stressed often. And I had the battle with the identity crisis. So it was like every feeling and, and thoughts was overwhelming in me. So I had a difficult time to come through that area. In the end, I managed to do it, and after that area, you come up to a to a, a, a kind of city again with some circus music. It's so weird, and I was like, you get from the depressing music <laughs> to the happy-go-lucky circus music, and I was like, this is I'm going insane. What's going on? I didn't like Tower Three at the beginning. No, no, no. So after that area, you come up to a bog area where everything is kind of gross. There are a box floating in the air. There are some slippery platforms, very tiny platforms again. And if you fall in this, in this area, you fall all the way down to the to the, the bog again, to the sump. And uh, I had a difficult time in that area and I was almost at the point where I was like, no, I can't do it anymore. It's too difficult. I'm not good enough. But someday it happened and I get we got to a cat tower and that's my favorite area in the whole game, in the main game, in the DLC game and the third game. I still think tower 3 is the worst tower because it's it's just 
too insane in in so many levels. But you come to a you come to a cat tower, where the music is just incredible and the atmosphere is magical, and I just love to be in this area every time. But remember. In Tower 3 there are no mercy. If you fall from the cat tower, you fall all the way down. And that's the that's the the punishment almost in the whole Tower 3 area. If you miss, you fall all the way down. You have the you have the chance to fall all the way down. You have no safe zone like in Tower 1 and Tower 2. And after the cat area, you come up to you come up to a tower that you think that's the end, but it's not the end. And then you come to a waterfall area. You come up to an area where time is stopped. And then you come to the de demon devil area where there are quicksand and things like that. When I come to the waterfall area back then, I had used a lot of time in Tower 3. I ending up slip on a platform and I was falling all the way down from the waterfall. And remember, this is the third last area in the whole game. And I was falling all the way down to the bottom and i was like no i'm done i'm tired of the game i'm quitting i love the game but i don't like tower 3. i'm done and people was like in chat no come on do it you can do it but i was like no i can't do it anymore this is too difficult i had managed to complete tower 1 and tower 2 but yeah i i can't do it anymore so i was like i'm done and i made a video where i was uh, showing my fall and i was saying sorry i'm done with the game and I think there was around three weeks later, I started my journey again. Because when I said to the people and the YouTube and the chat that I was done trying to complete Tower 3, I got a weird feeling that almost I was defeated by the game. And it was like, I felt that I have left something that I shouldn't have left. I was starting to dreaming about Jump King over the jumps that I didn't made. I was like, oh, I can do it like that way. I was dreaming about Jump King. I was thinking about Jump King and there was like, there was something, a little guy on my shoulder that said to me all the time, you have to go back. Is your destiny. You have to do it. Remember all the good talks you have with the chat. Remember the challenge. Remember how jump. Oh, I get goosebumps. Chills again. Remember how the game changed you. So I picked up the game again, and I completed Tower Three. was yelling in the chat they was sending donation they was like holy shit you did it and there are a lot not a lot of people that have made to complete all three towers it was insane i completed it and i was like this game is absolutely insane and um, yeah it was just magical it was i was done with the game i was telling the chat well we done we completed it what to do now Maybe I should do Undertale Let's Play again, or maybe I should live stream some other things. But I was done, and people was like, whoa, you are good at the game, and uh, my life's moved on. I was starting to do other things, and rename the channel, and uh, making videos, and Zelda come out, and things like that. I was moving away from Jump King. But there was always a little thing in me that was missing, playing Jump King. But what was the purpose? I had complete the whole game. Why should I go back to Jump King? I have completed it. No point to return. I missed the people in the chat. I missed talking about Jump King. I missed... I have the extremely difficult challenge. And I don't think... 
no other games had given me the same kind of challenge feeling. Before or after Jump King? And let me try to explain why, what I mean about that. In some way, Jump King is like a, a big challenge, a platforming challenge, but at the same time, it's like a high score challenge. How far can you come before you're falling? If you have some friends that haven't completed it, how far can you come? You're sitting in a group, who can come furthest? Who can, who can come highest up to the tower? The people at the bottom that didn't do well have to drink a bottle of wine or something, bottle of wine, a bottle of beer or something like that. You can, you can put some challenge to your friends and things like that. Have a fun. Every time I have a people over that haven't heard about Jump King, I put it on and say, hey, check it out. And they are like, holy shit, this is a difficult game. And uh, I was trying to recommend people, and I love to see people trying the game, but why should I play it again? I have completed it. It's not like that you can just, why should I play it again? To, it, you can't get the same magic as the first journey you had with the game. It won't be as magical the second time. So I was trying to show the game to other people, and I was trying to <laughs> get a laugh every time I saw people fail and I was trying to recommend the game and um, one of my yeah I had a I had a person that told me a thing that have been standing that have been in my head for a long time and it was the the partner I had before Nintendo Talk turned over to the P-Wing. And uh, I, I have a, so much love for Gris. Gris. I call it Gris all the time, but it, it's Gris. Uh, and Jump King, of course. And I said to him, well, I, well, you have to play Gris. It's one of my favorite games. And uh, I said to him, it's very, and that's the point with the, the story. I said to him, it's very important that you play Gris while it's dark outside. You have headphones on. There are no other people in the room. And you play it through one setting. And uh, he, he played the game and he did everything beside what I told him. So he was playing with a friend. He was playing at, while he was turned, there was sun outside. He, uh, yeah, he didn't have headphones on. I think he played in one setting, but still. And he told me after that, I didn't actually connect with the game. I don't think it was that good. It was a 7 out of 10. And I was so, yeah, but you didn't listen to my recommendation for how to play the game and then he told said something that's a very important and a thing i have that had been sitting in my head since then and every time i get I, what i'm trying to say he, he told me thank you a game should be fun under every circumstances you don't have to have it's getting dark outside. You don't have to use your headphones before a game is good. A good game is good every day, every time. You can play it all the time. That's a good game. It's not a good game if you have to put up uh, uh, some... some. Have, it have to be dark or you have to... Yeah, sitting for yourself and play through one sitting. And I, I told him, I have to disagree. I think it's okay that some games have some rules or some circumstances that fits the game before the magic hit. Because the music is important, Gris. That you play through it in one sitting is important because you have the, the, the simple journey and it's only three hours long. And you have to be alone with the game. And with the same with Jump King, and that's the point with the whole thing. Jump King needs to be played under the right circumstances. And it's funny because I recommended Jump King to many people and I've seen many people picked it up and stopped playing it after two hours and say, no, I'm done. But I think and I have a feeling that people have played under wrong circumstances and uh, maybe combined with they didn't have the patience or didn't want to put out, put in all the, the time this game has to get before it gets amazing. So. If you're a person that play while there are kids running around or, or a phone is ringing, you can concentrate while playing Jump King. If you're playing Jump King while you're thinking about another game too, you can't play Jump King, you have to be concentrated. 
If you play Jump King for one hour and just skip over to the next and wait a week after that and play Jump King again, you can master the area. Jump King needs to be played while you're focused, while you don't think about other games, while you don't have, have plans while you're playing it, while you, you don't wait, wait a, a month before you play it again. You have to get the full control into the game. You have to put your eyes and mind into the game and master it. You have to sit down and say to yourself, I'm willing to try to do it now. I'm willing, willing to try to take up the task, to try to complete this game, to master it, to find the right way through the level design. And I know I will fall a lot of times, but I will keep going, even when I get frustrating. And I think many people stop at that moment when they get frustrating and have, have the feeling they want to throw the controller. Well, throw it into a pillow, pick up the controller again and try again. This game is a great example of a game that doesn't fit into the type of year we are living in. We have so many opportunity to play other games we have the xbox we have we have the playstation we have nintendo or, and we have a lot of free free to play games why should you try to beat jump king and fail all the time when you can play final fantasy 7 rebirth and a lot of all of the last of us and things like that when you are playing a, a game where you're jumping around with a pixel character that fail all the time and you have to start from the bottom and back up again this game uses retro kind of gameplay where if you get a game or you have to start back at the beginning and, and i love a tough challenge and that's the magic with jump king is that no you have to take up the challenge you can't just play last of us or or final fantasy 7 rebirth for two months and then go back to jump king you have to focus on jumping you have to have this as the main game while you're playing it to master it <laughs> so yeah i completed the whole Jump King journey and I was playing through Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and and I made, made a let's play of other games afterwards but there were always a part in me that was missing playing Jump King again and I couldn't find the reason to replay it and I definitely couldn't find the reason to live stream it again why should people watch and Jump King is already a game that splits people up in two half. One one side of the people love it, and the other people's side of uh, people don't care about it, or maybe they don't know about it. So yeah, my good friend uh, Mark, he, he was talking with me sometimes about Jump King, and uh, I love that energy. Um, the one that said uh, before my journey started that Jump King, as I remember it. Uh, didn't have the good level design ending up actually being so hyped with the journey and uh, was talking about it and I, I, it does it it just set a huge impress on me the, the the journey I had so I was thinking about it all the time and I was trying to find other ways to get my jump king fix try to find other games that could give me the challenge that jump king gave me so I was searching for merchandise for jump king and other things um, the cd for the jump king i didn't pick up the cd back then because it was just a joke thing so i have to get the cd i haven't that yet and uh, i saw the jump king plush <laughs> and uh, there are only 490 in the whole world it's very limited and there are only one on sale on ebay and uh, the price was 230 dollars around 2,300 Danish crown. And uh, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't give that price without, I had the feeling that I deserved it. And uh, I hadn't, I, I didn't had play, I hadn't played Jump King for a while. And I was like, it's a lot of money. And maybe that plush, that Jump King plush will remind me of my journey again, give a little, bit of that sparkle that I had when I was live streaming it because it was magical um, so I was no I can't never get that feeling again and I got to a point especially now with the state of the Nintendo switch where we hasn't any 
crazy upcoming Nintendo Switch games beside Metroid Prime 4 and for, for some people the Princess Peach Showtime game. So I was like, I need a special experience again. And um, I tried to play Undertale the Genocide Road because I really love Undertale because the Pacifist Road was absolutely amazing. The Genocide Road didn't connect it with me at the same way and I actually stopped at Sans. A final battle. Um, one of the things I loved about Undertale was the music combined with all the characters and, and the journey. And if you check the genocide road, you just kill everything and there actually isn't really any music in the game. So the, the journey with Undertale the second time was a little weird for me. It was still good, but it didn't have the same magic touch. So I was in a state where I was actually a little not depressed because I have a kid, a wife, and I love everything in that and I love my life. But I was a little bit depressed with my hobby and the missing part with the community where I could feel a uh, the special magic and you can't just bring that up in the air you you have to get it with some accidental you, you you have to be lucky if you feel that magic so i got a little bit sad and depressed big over i will never maybe play jump king again and that's a, such a special experience that i had so i was starting to watch other people play Jump King on YouTube and uh, uh, there was a, a big YouTuber who tried and managed to get platinum in Jump King. If you have an Xbox or PlayStation, you get you get, get you can get trophies. You can't that get that on the Nintendo Switch. And and there are only around ten people in the whole world who have platinum Jump King. And um, one of the difficult challenge was to clear Jump King. The main game, the DLC, and the DLC 2, without falling, even once. <laughs> and I was looking at the guy do a let's play, and I was like, "This journey is insane. No, nobody can do that." And he, he it took him over. It took him so long time to defeat it because he had many. You, then you have to complete it with the slippery shoes you can get in a side quest where everything is sliding around and you can you have to clear the game with the iron boots where everything is heavy and it was like an impossible journey but at the same time I was like but there are still more to do than in Jump King I couldn't check up the challenge I know that there are only 10 people in the whole world around that that have completed the game to plenty on I will never do that. I'm I'm not that kind of crazy gamer. I'm not the speedrunner guy. I don't try to complete the game in a certain amount of time. I'm not that crazy good to that kind of things. But there is something in me that was sparkling when I saw you could do the Jump King playthrough without falling. Because <laughs> it sounded absolutely crazy and I was like... But maybe if I practice a lot, a month, months in the future, years in the future, maybe I can clear the main game. So I was, well, I was like, all right, Daniel, all right. It won't be the same as the first time, of course. You can't get the same experience. You can't get the same magic as the first time. But why not try to complete the main game without falling even once? And if I fall through the playthrough, I have to restart and start all over. That sounded like a crazy idea, but suddenly I saw the opportunity and the reasons, reason to replay the game and live stream it. And I saw the reason to for the reason if I completed this task, I actually thought that it will be a, such a huge completion completion thing that I could deserve to buy the plush, the jumping plush. 
So I said for myself, and I posted on the Facebook group, all right, <laughs> I miss my Jump King. Why not try to complete the main game without falling even once? And I was like, it will probably never happen, but let's try it out. So I can play the game for the rest of the year. And I gave me a second mission, and that was to clear the DLC, the first DLC without falling even once. And then I will get a Jump King tattooed. And people was like, holy shit, are you crazy? And some were laughing, and I was like, it will never gonna happen, but at least I can play Jump King again. And I can have to talk with the guys, and I can practice and things like that. So I took up the, the task, and uh, was exciting to see how it would end. And it's funny because... As I told you, I'm not that kind of guy who loves to speedrun games. I'm not that kind of guy who are the best at react fast to object tools that come through you. And I'm not the best game on the whole world. I'm pretty good at 2D platformer, may I say. And um, I think I'm good mastering that those kind of games. But the thing with Jump King is that, as an example, Undertale, the reason why I stopped playing Undertale, the final boss with Sans in the Genocide Road, was because the final fight against him, you had to have so fast reflex to avoid his attacks. And the D-pad on the Pro Controller, and I know it sounds like a <laughs> like a, a bad um, reason that I didn't complete it, but the, the D-pad on the Pro Controller is so bad and so slippery that it was it felt like it was impossible to react as fast that the game wanted you to. I think it would be much easier on a PC and things like that, on a PC like that, a keyboard. So I was like, I don't have the speed in my hands to do this, and I'm bad at Tetris. I love Tetris Effect. I think it's one of the best experiences I've ever had, but I can never compare to the good people, the people that are great at Tetris, because my fingers just can't react that fast. I'm more like a person who love to get to love JRPGs where you can grind and take your time to find the best road through the game and find the best equipment do side quest and feel like I'm a pro gamer like that or like games where you have to be precise in your jumps in jumping you could take your time you can plan out the jump where you want to stand so it's a game suited for me take your time Take a breath, forget things, just think about the game and the jump, focus on that. If you have to take 10 minutes, focus on that. If you come to a new area in the game, take a breath and listen to the music. See the surroundings. Like in Celeste, take your time. You are in the moment where you want to climb the mountain, but you don't have to do it fast, just take your time. Enjoy every single moment. So that's the reason why I was thinking that Jump King, the no fall challenge, would be almost impossible, but still a thing that I would enjoy. So I started the journey for around two weeks ago and the hype was real in the chat. Holy shit, man, the people was back, Mark, Annie, Jack the Ripper, uh, uh, Simon, uh, Kim, Sonny, a lot of more, sorry that I forgot the names, but there, the, the people were back. Andreas and Penela, newcomers for the channel, was following through every live stream. I live stream almost every day, and we got a new record every time, and it was just <laughs> absolutely crazy of a journey. And I said to people, yeah, this journey will be long. It will take some time. And the funny part with this run and I called it the ultimate Jump King, the ultimate challenge. And you can see it on the front page is the latest Let's Play I've made. And I have made a playlist for it. So you can check all the live stream hours if you want to. And I think, but I think the magic happens when you see it live because you have the connection with the people in the chat. You can still hear what I'm talking about with the people, but you can see the chats. I'm reading them up, but still not the same, but I would recommend you to check out it when I'm sending live. It, amazing. But, um, the different thing this time when I started it was that before I started, I, I told people, 
I think actually Jump King is my top three best games of all time. And I was like, people was like, you got from 16 to top three now. And I told people, I have thinking about Jump King all the time. I had dreamed about Jump King. I, 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 I was trying to find a reason to play Jump King again. How many games can you say that about? I play Donkey Kong Country two, th two times through every year. And I love that game. That's my second favorite game of all time. I love Xenoblade 3 because it was totally amazing experience. As experience I want everyone to have. The amazing story, amazing gameplay, amazing music, everything. I loved it from start to finish. But Jump King had that moment where it affected my life in so many ways with the community, with the challenge, with my personal uh, uh, demons and, 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 and fight in myself. The, the, the record, the high score, the, the impossible challenge where you finally did it, the retro kind of feel where you feel like you're playing back in the time where there was something called high score and you only had that one game you can play through the whole year. It is that kind of feeling I get with Jump King. <sighs> but um, yeah, so I was very nervous how this journey would be. Would it, be, would it, would it feel like a journey that I would start it just to try to get the magic again and it wouldn't connect again maybe or would it bring something new because it wouldn't bring the same thing back because i have already challenged and beaten the first main game tower but this is different and the first time i live streamed the ultimate challenge for over a week ago i had a thing that people have to connect and understand what the challenge actually was that we were starting over every time so if i made one mistake it's back over restart no i can't practice to go to the top it's fucking restart and it would be horrendous it, it, it would be awful to watch almost if i wanted to live stream every week for, as an example i ended up live streaming almost every day it would be dreadful for people to watch but it, it wasn't because people was talking they were sharing, we were talking about our favorite movies, we were talking about manga, we were talking about uh, 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 the, the, the background music, we were talking about music, we were talking about the, our favorite games of all time, we were talking about other let's play, uh, about the community and, and podcast and things like that. We were talking about everything. Pokemon, RPGs, puzzle games. We were joking back and forth. People were cheering in the chat. Every time we had a live stream, we got a new PB, a new best record. New people was coming in to see what, what, what was the ultimate challenge. I saw new people try to pick up the game because they got interested in it. And I can see newer pe new people, one of my friends, are very addicted to the game. So this time it actually clicked on people because I tried to explain why I needed to go back. And this time with the let's play of Jump King was different than the first time because we talked about the small details in the game that made the main game so special. We talked about the layers in the background, how the trees was painted. We talked about how the rain was sounding. <laughs> We talked about what the what the symbols in the game was. We talked about the the painting in the background. What what could it mean? We talked about how to precise the jumps. We were talking about our, our mating made a painting where I was trying to draw how to make the best jump. And at the beginning, it was just the meaning that I would live stream one time every week. But I ended up do it every day almost. And it got more crazy and crazy and it was like the main game was even more epic this time because you recognized the, the, the difference in uh, the details in the game. We were talking about Jump King Quest, the, the sequel to Jump King, how it would be, how amazing I would react to the game. People was joking with me that Jump King is probably ending up being Daniel's best favorite game of all time. And I was like, ah, that's still far too up to Cineblade 3. 
but they're, they're just having something special with the Jump King Ultimate Challenge. It was like the game showed itself from a new side. That I had to restart every fucking time. I had to see the forest again and again. And and the way where the shit was falling down off the wall. The, the false king's uh, uh, keep. The Bergenham. Uh, Bergen, I can't remember the city name. But it was amazing. The snow area. The ice area. The church. And people was playing through the game while I was playing it. People was playing other games while I was live streaming it. People were snacking, eating chips and ice cream. It was just chilling. It was amazing. And I already miss it. And may, some of you may think, if you haven't followed the live stream, you are already missing it. But you was just started on the journey. But yeah, I was just, I'm just started on the journey. I only made seven live streams. But ladies and gentlemen, that had met, there was magic in the air. So I beat the main game with Jump King on the seven live streams. <laughs> and when I reached the top, I actually broke and cried because it was so epic. I was saying to the chat, Jump King is my favorite game of all time. It's so special. And I understand why people can see the, say that other games are better in so many ways. Of course, other games have better stories. But Jump King, that are, it's so rare that games can make you talk about games, think about games, dream about games, take the challenge, change your personal life, have, get the community to play it, have, share the journey. Make a, I have a, we have a thing in next month where we're, where some of the the P Wing subscribers are meeting up and we are have a, ch a chilling night. It it was like a it, it was like a moment I will never forget. I will never forget it. And I ended up purchased the plush and it will come next month. And of course I will do an unboxing on that. And I'm ready for mission two, clear. Tower 2 and Tower 2 is much more difficult and I don't think that journey will be as easy at all and uh, maybe it will never happen but I still I can still play the game then so right now I'm still in the journey I still have one tower left and today I wrote on the Facebook channel that I was googling it are you a true king if you have completed Tower 1 and Tower 2 without falling and skip Tower 3, because Tower 3 is crazy. It's almost impossible to do without falling even once. And the Google said no. So I have a f I, I want to be a jump king king. So yeah, why not take Tower 3? Why not live stream the game for years to come? I'm okay with it. Because jump king. It's my favorite game of all time. Thank you for all the people who are watching my live stream. Thank you for all the people who are sharing and talking with me in the live chat. Thank you for all the donation. Thank you for the hype. Thank you for, for being together with me. And thank you for giving me memories and moments as a gamer that I will never forget. The journey with Jump King is a thing that will be printed in my brain forever. When I get around 80 years old, I'm 100% sure. If I'm thinking about games, Nintendo, my channel, just games and all, Jump King will pop up in my head. You guys who have watched the live stream, you will always be in my mind. I will never forget Kim, I will never forget Mark, I will never forget Anna, I will never forget Simon, I will never forget Andreas, <coughs> I will never forget Penilla, I will never forget Sonny, I'll never forget Jack, I'll never forget all the people who are watching. Nikolai, Geeks, Simon, Niklas. You all was a part of this journey. Lasse, sorry, Lasse. You all were a part of this journey. Thank you for sharing it with me.
I hope people will try out Jump King. Take your time with it. Take up the challenge. If you can, live stream it. I would love to watch other people live stream it. If some of you who I watch, who are watching my content, contact me and see uh, if you're one for another country, write to me and say, hey, I'm doing a last Let's Play of Jump King. I will watch, definitely. I'm begging people to let's play, do a Let's Play of Jump King. I, I want to be a part of their journey. I know that Jump King won't be for everyone. And I know pe some people may be disappointed that Jump King fill a lot of my channel right now. But I have to. I love it. I love the game. It's a journey that are amazing. And I'm, of course, we'll talk about Zelda and Mario and Xenoblade and Metroid in the future also. And right now, it's not that. Paper Mario, I'm looking for so much forward to Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, one of my favorite games. But I, I, I need to make Jump King content in the future, future also. Even though I know people don't want to hear me talk about it. I, Mark said it in the chat. Maybe you someday should do a top 25 or what the most dreadful areas in Jump King. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. I can also talk of one of my top 10 screens of Jump King. My worst fallen Jump King. My best moment in Jump Kings, the best music in Jump Kings. My hopes for the sequel. There's a lot I can talk about. And soon I will get my Jump King plush. And I was talking about in the chat that someday this will be taken down because this is my kid's room, upcoming room. So I will have to close down my collecting things. I will still make content in the future, of course, and we will move out to another bigger place in the future where I can get my own big gamer room. And um, my dream when I talk about that is that, of course, the room should be purple with neon purple light, all my Switch games everywhere, posters, and you can get a poster with Jump King. And I will get a glass closet where I can have my Jump King plush. I will lock it up I will have this in the on the front I will get another copy as so I can open it so I can see how it looks inside I had the CD so Jump King will be part of my journey from now on Jump King is my favorite game and I'm not sure if it, it will be chopped and so for some reason Simul Blade 3 that was my favorite game of all time before was a uh, a single player journey experience that the best I ever had. But Jump King is a journey I share with you guys. Thank you for watching my big talk about Jump King. See you very soon where I will live stream the DLC of Jump King. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. This was Dang from the P-Wing. Purple love to you all.